Hey, everyone, and welcome to the All It Takes a Goal podcast, the best place in the entire world, including all of Canada, to learn how to build new thoughts, new actions, and new results. I'm your host, John Acuff, and today I'm going to teach you how to absolutely crush one of the most important parts of a goal, the do stage. But first, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Quick question. What if you could guarantee the success of your goals? No, seriously. The book you want to write? Guaranteed. The business you want to start? Guaranteed. The exercise plan you want to stick with? Guaranteed. What if no goal was off limits? It's possible with the Guaranteed Goals community. The Guaranteed Goals community is my first ever membership program where you'll find the courage, connection, and most importantly, the community you need to win all your goals. Ever since I started hosting online challenges with tens of thousands of people from around the world, the number one request people sent me was for a private, non-Facebook community where we can all work on our goals together. That's why I created the Guaranteed Goals community on a user-friendly platform where you won't be overwhelmed with endless dance videos, silly reels, and dog memes. Inside this community, in addition to learning my fail-proof formula for achieving goals, you'll get access to a massive course library, check-ins with my team for accountability, the chance to win awesome prizes, 12 VIP Q&A sessions with me, the ability to team up with other members who are working on similar goals as you, and so much more. A year from now, I want you to be thankful for the way you invested in yourself and your goals today. Join me at acuff.me slash goals. That's A-C-U-F-F dot M-E backslash goals. I'll see you there. All right, now let's jump into the content. So the theme of today is do. That's D-O, do. Why are we talking about doing? Because it's the third stage in any successful goal. There are four stages to a goal. I've talked about them for a few episodes now, but just in case you haven't heard, any of those other episodes. Here's what the four stages are. The four most important stages for a goal are number one, dream. Number two, plan. Number three, do. And number four, review. And we define them by asking a question, a really simple question. So in dream, the question you're asking is, what do you want to do? So you're coming up with a ton of different options, a ton of different things you can do. You're really kind of setting yourself free to come up with as many goals as you can possibly imagine. In this stage, I think of it as the no bouncer stage. There's no bouncer for the nightclub that is your list of goals. Anybody can get in. Any goal, any goal at all, big, small, medium, they all get in during dream. In plan, the question you're asking is how will you do it? Okay, how are you going to actually do it? Let's plan that and do the one we're going to talk about today. The question is, are are you doing it? Are you doing it right now? And then review the fourth stage. The question you're asking is, did it work? When you do a review, that's what you're trying to figure out. Are the things I'm doing moving me toward my goal or am I stuck? So last week, I told you that there were two specific words you need for the plan stage. That was the second part of a goal, the plan stage. If you didn't hear that episode, the words were personal and specific-ish. Those are the two words we spent a lot of time on is figuring out how to make sure that your goal is personal, but also figuring out how to make sure it's specific-ish, emphasis on the ish. We discussed some practical ways to make sure your dream was personal and specific-ish and you moved forward in the process of actually accomplishing the goal. If you didn't hear that episode, check it out. We'll link it in the show notes. today. I'm going to teach you one of my favorite tricks to get lots of action done in the do stage of a goal. So here's how it's going to work. Take out your list of goals. Now, because it's February, like it's just February, I haven't planned all of my goals for the year yet. There's this, there's this myth that says you should know exactly what your goals are by January 1st. That's the starting day. That's when the new year begins. You've got to have it all locked down. Like you've got to be ready to roll by January 1st. But I don't think that's true. I think that's actually kind of silly. I work with a lot of billion dollar companies who run their year from June to June or March to March. They don't worry about starting everything on January 1st and neither should you. January 1st is a great day. It is. It's a great day to start a goal because there's what I call cultural momentum. Everybody's talking about it. People are excited about it. There's new you, new year, like that kind of language. But it's not the only day when you can begin a new goal. So right now, I still have a massive list of goals for this year that I'm pretty curious about. 
I'll be refining it and changing it all year long. I think February is actually a great month to retire a goal. By now, you're a whole month smarter about your goals than you were a month ago. You have four weeks of more information to go, oh, this is how the year is really starting to shape up. I'm starting to see the year a little better. If you can already tell that, yeah, this goal ain't it, then retire it. If by February you already know, yeah, I don't, I don't like this goal at all. I didn't want to do this goal one time. Like this one was a real chore. Retire it so you can focus on something that really matters. That's how goals always go. Curiosity leads to commitment. Curiosity leads to commitment. February is a great month to be curious about your goals. I have more than 50 goals on my list. I started with 70, but I'm refining that list down as I live into the year. So take out your list and pick any goal. For me, the one I'll use as an example, I'll pick my goal of reading 66 books. That's one of my goals for 2023. I read 62 in 2022. I track them all on Goodreads. If you like Goodreads or use Goodreads, look me up on Goodreads. We'll link it in the show notes. I decided in 2022 that I post every single book I read on Goodreads. So if you're curious what I'm reading, that's where you can find it. It's a really fun way to keep track of your books. I love Goodreads. But I read 62 books in 2022, and I'm proud of myself because I avoided the temptation to say, next year I'll read 200. That's usually what I do. Like I have a little bit of a win. I have a little bit of momentum, and I go, I should quadruple what I'm doing now. And then it cripples me with work, and it's overwhelming, and I don't do any. So my habit, my pattern, if you will, is 62 books. And then normally I would go, let's do 200. And then I'd end up reading like 11. That's how I tend to do things. But this year I was a little more patient. I was a little more deliberate. I'm a little older. I have a lot of gray hair. I don't know if you've ever seen a photo of me, like a current photo of me. I have a lot of gray hair. A lot of wisdom is how I'd say it. Um, yeah, I, I'm just a little bit older than I used to be. And so now I can recognize some of my goal patterns and now I'm changing them. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to add a couple more. I'm going to go from 62 to 66. That's not too many. That's doable. The goal is 66 books. And now I'll ask our first question when it comes to doing. What actions will make accomplishing that goal easy? What actions will make accomplishing that goal easy? I want it to be so easy to accomplish. I think about it like hooking up future me. I'm always trying to make great decisions today that make tomorrow me more likely to succeed. That reframing helps me avoid short-term thinking. So short-term me would rather scroll Instagram than read a book. I just, let's be honest, I would rather do that. There's a lot of days where I'd rather just be like mindlessly flipping through and watching like bird videos or people falling down ski mountains or like just nonsense. Short-term me would rather do that. Short-term me would rather watch Netflix than read a book. Short-term me would rather watch Hulu than read a book. So to snap myself out of short-term thinking, I ask myself questions like, what can present John do today to make future John's odds of success even greater? Let me say that again. What can present John do today to make future John's odds of success even greater? It's February. I don't want December John to look up and realize he's got 14 books to slam through in an entire month. Like I've only got a month. I got a month to read 14 books in order to squeak across the finish line because I was lazy all year long. I want December John, like future me. I, I love future me. I want future me to have an amazing life. I want him to waltz across that finish line. Like maybe even read 70 books because I crushed the do stage so well. So in order to do that, I need to first brainstorm a lot of actions related to this particular goal. So here's how I would do that with my 66 book goal. During the do stage, I could, number one, listen to audiobooks at 1.6 speed. That's my new favorite speed, by the way. I, once you go a little fast on an audiobook, you are never going back, dude. Once you get up to like 1.5, and then if you'll accidentally change it back to one speed, like regular speed, it feels like the person is trying to torture you with the speed of the, it's the worst. So if I want to get through a lot of books, 1.6 speed, let's go. It's kind of like 1.5, but it's just a tiny bit better and I'm doable. I can do 1.6. Number two, I could check my shelves at home for books I haven't read yet. 
You ever shop at your own house? If you're like me, you, you own a lot of books and you have probably not read all the books. There's some you haven't read. So if I wanted to save the trouble of waiting for a book from Amazon or going to a store to buy them, I could just look at my shelf and be like, oh, I remember that book is like four years. I bought that book four years ago and I never read it. Ooh, I could, re I could start that one today. Number three thing I could do, I could follow book Instagram accounts for suggestions. I love following people on Instagram that are like, here's the 10 books. Here's the 12 books you should read. Here's the 22 books about personal development or here's four books that'll make you rich. I could follow a bunch of Instagram accounts for suggestions. Number four, I could buy the books that guests on this podcast mention. Usually when I interview somebody, I ask them at the end, hey, what are the four books you'd put on like your Mount Rushmore? Usually nonfiction, but I let it, them, they can say whatever they want. Or I say to them, what's a book you've given away more than any other, other than your own? Because oftentimes I interview writers. I could buy some of those books. They have great recommendations. Number five, I could pick a specific book for every trip I take. I travel a lot for work. What if I said, okay, when I go to Salt Lake City, like, and I've got a lot of airplane time, like, this is the book I'm reading. This is the book I'm listening to. What if I just came up with a book for a trip or a book for every two trips, whatever? Uh, number six, I could read when I board a plane. When I sit down, there's actually 30 minutes before you take off. So what if I read then? Uh, number seven, I could listen to audiobooks while I run. Number eight, I could listen to audiobooks while I drive. Number nine, I could listen to audiobooks while I brush my teeth. Number 10, I could listen to audiobooks while I do housework, like putting away the laundry. Are you starting to notice a pattern? One of the reasons I believe that audiobooks are selling so many copies right now, like it used to be, say like five years ago, if you looked at... 10 book sales. So I, I write books. Um, and if you look at 10 of my book sales, it would be seven were paper or hardcover, two were digital, and one was audiobook. And now five, five are paper, four are audiobook, and only one is digital. Like 20 years ago, so many people were like, dude, paper's dead, digital's going to take over. Yeah, 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 fine. It's, it'll grow, whatever audiobooks, man, people love them. And I think it's because podcast trained us all that we can learn and listen at the same time. And paper books are the last single focus way to read a book. You can't multitask a paper book. I can't like drive my car while reading a paper book, but I can listen to an audio book. So I could do that. Number 11, I could buy digital copies of books so that if I'm stuck waiting on a haircut or a doctor's appointment, I can move forward in the book. I can bring up the Kindle app on my phone. Number 12, I could switch up the styles and lengths of the books I read so that I don't get bored. If I read five thick books in a row, oh, it's too much. I need some shorter books. I need a little bit of fiction. I need, you know, maybe a graphic novel, like a Batman. Not like that's my, that's my jam. Graphic novels, uh, Batman is where I'm going. Like I switch it up the styles. I switch up the styles and the links so that I don't get stuck. Number 13, I could download the free samples of audiobooks so I can test if I hate the narrator's voice before I commit. You ever listen to an audiobook and the narrator is ter ruins the whole book, ruins it. So what if I just listen to the sample that'll save me some money, save me some time being like, I can't, I can't with this guy. This is the worst. Um, number 14, I could find a friend to read a book with. So I have some accountability. That's always helpful. You got somebody in your life. You want to read a book together, like work on a goal together. Awesome. Number 15, I could use a four page minimum goal before I do other things. Like what if I said, okay, I'm fine watching some TV. I'm fine scrolling Instagram, whatever. Like everybody does that, me included. But what if I said, before I sit down and watch TV, I got to read four pages, maybe 10 pages. Maybe maybe it's the, the gateway to doing something like that. I would probably stack up some pages. Number 16, which I already mentioned, track all my books on Goodreads. So it's easy to keep track of the progress. My favorite thing about Goodreads from last year, it told me the number of pages I read. I got so obsessed with that page count. Like I got towards the end of the year and I almost had 20,000 pages. It killed me. I was like at 19,700. I was like, oh, I should have read 300 more pages this year. I didn't even know that was a stat. And then in December when they told me, oh, by the way, we've been keeping track of your pages. I was like, what? I started to read more. Tracking it on Goodreads motivates me. And number 17, I could check my screen time each week to make sure my Kindle and Audible app like were higher than Instagram. That took me 15 minutes to come up with 17 different actions I can work on during the do stage. So here's the trick. The trick is the more you brainstorm before you jump into this stage, like where you're actually doing your goal, the easier it is to stay in motion. 
we're trying to avoid the dreaded question. Here's the dreaded question. You ready? What do I do now? What do I do now? You see, do, successful do, is all about consistent motion. That's your first thought today. A little bit of homework. I know it's weird to have homework on a podcast, but I want you to get a ton of value out of this. So here's a little bit of homework. I want you to brainstorm actions for one of your goals. Just come over the list of at least like five things you can do to move your goal forward. Why does this matter? Well, it matters because the longer your list, the faster the progress you'll make. The longer the list is, the longer your list of actions, the faster the progress you'll make. Let's say that during the dream stage, you decided, I want to get in shape. Yeah, that's my goal. Like this year, that's one of my goals. I want to get in shape. Maybe during the plan stage, you made your goal specific-ish and you said, you know what? I want to lose 10 pounds by this summer by doing Orange Theory workouts. I love that. That's specific-ish. And by the way, Orange Theory isn't a sponsor, but feel free to slide into those DMs, Orange Theory. Well, let's go. But let's say that's your goal. So losing 10 pounds via Orange Theory by this summer is a great goal, but your do stage is too limited. If the only action you've given yourself is to go to Orange Theory to work out, what happens when you travel to a city for work and there's, there's not a location there? Well, what happens then? Well, the part of you that doesn't want to do the hard work is going to say, ah, oh, oh, no. Well, I guess we'll have to take these four days off. There's not an Orange Theory here. So, oh, well, because you only had one action. That was one of the greatest things I learned in 2022. My trainer put together a CrossFit workout for me that I can do in my garage when I'm home. I've got kettlebells and a pull-up bar on a tree outside like Rocky and Rocky IV when he's training in the snow versus Drago. I've got free weights and I've got enough kind of MacGyvered equipment to get a workout in. But what about, what about when I travel? In the past, I would have said, and by past, I mean like 2021. I love to talk about the past like it's 100 years ago. It's like, uh, this is something I've learned like in the last two years. In the past, I would have been like, oh, oh, well, I can't do my workout. I'm in a hotel room in Colorado Springs, and I only have 30 minutes, and the gym here doesn't have what I need. Like, I went down to the Hampton Inn. I was like, where are your kettlebells? And they didn't have kettlebells, so I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. That was my approach to health goals for years. But my trainer, Caleb, is smart. He created a workout for me that's 10 to 30 minutes long that I can do in a hotel room. He helped me come up with a massive list of actions I could do without a single weight or a piece of equipment. Now, I know that no matter where I am, I can do push-ups, sit-ups, dips. If there's a couch in the room, yeah, I'll just do some dips right there in the couch. Air squats, lunges, jumping jacks, etc. I don't have any more excuses. All I have are actions. I used two very different goal examples there, reading and fitness, because this principle works with any type of goal. Once you have a list of actions, I think about them through the lens of energy. I think about three different types of energy, high energy, medium energy, no energy, high energy, medium energy, no energy. One of my goals this year is to encourage one person every day. And that can be either a high energy, a medium energy or a no energy activity. Let me explain. For instance, when I go on a walk around my neighborhood with my next door neighbor, that's a high energy activity. That's a high energy action, right? We're one-on-one. I have to be present in the conversation. It takes about 45 minutes, etc. When I have medium energy, maybe it's in the middle of the day and I'm slumping a bit, but I, I still haven't encouraged anyone yet. A text message meets that goal. That's a medium energy action because all I have to do is write a text message to somebody that I'm thinking about and encourage them. That, that's really easy to do. A few sentences, you can do that with medium energy. Now, what about when I don't have any energy at all? I'm just whooped. It's a Thursday night at 9 p.m. and I'm waiting on a delayed flight in San Diego. I got up early that morning. My time zones are all jacked up because I'm in central time in San Diego, specific. And I'm like, ah, I spoke at a big event. I did a book signing. I met with the CEO and now I feel brain dead at the airport but I still want to move my goal forward a little bit, like at least a little bit. A no energy action is to add new names to my list of people I want to encourage. If I just try to guess who I want to encourage each day, I'll never do it. It's so much easier to make a big list of people beforehand and then just work your way through it. Remember, I said that present me likes to hook up future me. That's an example of that principle. January me. January me knew that there'd be an April me who had middle energy and didn't know who to text someday. So guess what January me did? 
I wrote down a hundred names in advance. I have a file. It's called encouragement. I made a huge list of the first 100 people. I hooked me up. So there I am. No energy. I'm at the airport in San Diego. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take out my phone, scroll through my contacts, and add a few more names to my encourage list. I'm not going to worry about encouraging anyone in that moment. I'm wiped out. I'm wiped out. And chances are I already knocked it out earlier in the day. I'm just going to write down Brad Lominick, Ashley Holland, Nate Bruins, et cetera. I'm going to create a list of people I want to encourage. Even with no energy, I can do that. That's one of the things that separates high performers and low performers, by the way. High performers always move goals forward, even if it's in tiny ways. It reminds me of a story I once heard from the Dream Team. Do you remember the Dream Team? This is when the U.S. put together like the team of the world's greatest basketball players. It was in 1992, and it was this collection of the NBA's best players. So Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, Hakeem was on it, like so many different amazing players. I think David Robinson was on it. Christian Leitner was on it. I could probably, Chris Mullen was on it. John Stockton was on it. I probably know most of the players. I used to really follow the NBA when I was a kid. So this was the first time they did it. They were going to compete in the Olympics. And a bunch of them, it was in Barcelona, liked to go out and party in Barcelona. So they would go out late at night, party in Barcelona. And one night they came home and there was a single person in the lobby, one player, watching a small television by himself. That player was Michael Jordan. And he was watching footage of Angola to prepare for the game. They were going to play Angola. And it didn't matter if he was tired. It didn't matter if he was thousands of miles from home. It didn't even matter if he didn't have access to a basketball court in that moment. He was moving his goal forward. And of course, they ended up winning that game by about a billion. But again, it didn't matter. Jordan wanted to move his goal of getting better forward. That's what the do stage is all about. Move your goal forward. Don't box yourself into like a narrow corner with your goal. Give yourself as many possible ways to do it so that it's easier to do it. Hook up your future self. Your chances are you're listening to this in February. The majority of people listen to this in February. Maybe you're listening to this in March, maybe in June, July. I don't know. But think about three months ahead, six months ahead, nine months ahead. What can you do today in the course of your goal that will hook yourself up nine months from now, six months from now, a month from now? How do you hook up future you? How do you do that? You come up with a huge list of actions and then you do them. That's what the doing stage is all about. Four stages, dream, plan, do, review. That's all it takes to accomplish a goal. Once you've created a wide variety of actions that help you with that goal, apply your time and actually do them. And then it gets really fun because then you get to move on to the final stage, which is review. We'll cover that in next week's episode. Thank you so much for listening today. We'll put all the links in the show notes as always. And thank you for reviewing my podcast. Here's one from Vaz526 that I loved. Here's what Vaz says. I listened to a good number of motivating, encouraging, and uplifting podcasts, but this one by John Acuff stands tall in comparison to the others. I think what my takeaway there is John Acuff is tall. That's very nice of you to say, Vaz. Every episode is packed with incredibly helpful advice and empowering gems that help me to have more confidence in stepping outside of my comfort zone to face my fears. I love that. Thank you for saying that, Vaz. That's really encouraging. Please make sure you subscribe or follow so that you don't ever miss another episode. I'll see you next Monday. And remember, all it takes is a goal. Thanks for listening. To learn more about the All It Takes is a Goal podcast and to get access to today's show notes and exclusive content from John Acuff, visit acuff.me slash podcast. Thanks again for joining us. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of the All It Takes is a Goal podcast. Podcast.